welcome, 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 welcome to God in the Word with your host, Prestigious Prize. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's me, guys, back again with financial worries for anybody that's having any financial problems or worries about money. God hears your prayers and is listening. So what I want to say is, get in tune, tune in, get in tune. Tune in, subscribe to the Bible Vibe. I don't need any fans because I'm already cool, but I do need supporters. I have faith in you, so tune in, tune in, tune in, get in tune. Subscribe to the Bible Vibe. Subscribe to the Bible Vibe. Yes, yes. People want to be a part of God, right? Everybody should be a part of God, but everybody will not be a part of God. And as we read this Bible, we will see why. But there's some people who God wants specifically. So first we're going to get into Bible banter. Yay! Bible banter! Yes! Everybody loves Bible banter. You have to. Okay? So, first, we're going to start with... Which book of the Bible is your dog's favorite? Ooh. <laughs> Get it? Your dog's favorite book of the Bible is Ooh. <laughs> Okay. What kind of colorful weapon did Noah use? A rainbow. A rainbow. Something like a bow and arrow, but it was it was colorful and beautiful. A rainbow. Um, was Abraham an uncle to many nephews? No, but he was an uncle to a lot. <laughs> Get it? He was Lot's uncle. Okay, so this is the last one, guys. <laughs> Bear with me. Because of the deception in the garden, what did the snake change forever? Story. Get it? The 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 snake changed his story. His story. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Okay, I was say that was funny. I thought this was interesting to so some people that's a little bit younger that is um they told me about dinosaurs in school so did you know that some think the bible also described a dinosaur many lived in the behemoth god talks about and job was a dinosaur read the passage in job 40 look at behemoth which I made along with you, and which feeds on grass like an ox. What strength it has in its lions. What power in the muscles of its belly. Its tail sways like a... Its tail sways like a cider. The sinew of its thighs are close-knit. Its bones are tubes of bronze. Its limbs like rods of iron. It ranks first among the works of God. Yet... Its maker can approach it with his sword. The hills bring in their pr products, and all the wild animals play nearby. Under the lotus plants it lies, hidden among the reeds in the marsh. The lotus conceals it in their shadow. The poplar by the stream surrounds it water. A raging river does not alarm it. It is secure, though the Jordan should surge against its mouth. Can anyone capture it by the eyes or trap it and pierce its nose? If it were a dinosaur, then it would be a plant eater, something along the lines of a brontosaurus. Others feel it could be another animal like a hippo, an elephant, or a rhino. However, one description is tail sways like a cider. Discount these animals. Each of those above animals have tiny tails. The dinosaur, especially the brontosaurus, had large, had huge, large 
log like tails. So I thought that was interesting. Did you know there were a left-handed army in the Bible? Among all these soldiers, there were 700 select troops who were left-handed, each of whom could sling a stone at a hair and not miss. Judges 20, verse 16. Must have been hard for them to open a can of beans with no left-handed can openers around. So this is interesting we're gonna talk about star wars for a second but i have another one about batman we'll do that one later did you not today but another day did you know there's a city in star wars that uses a name from the bible in samuel's 128 king saul paid a medium someone who contacts the dead to help them the woman lived in indoor in star wars return of the jedi indoor is a forest moon and home of the ewoks May the Holy Spirit be with you. Did you know what Jesus spit on people? Did you know that Jesus spit on people? I didn't, I didn't know that, so we don't have to talk about that because we always raise that spitting is nasty. Jesus was spitting on people and healing people. So, I don't know. I don't want to spit on nobody and get slapped. In Mark 7, Jesus spit on a man's tongue so he could speak. In Mark 8, Jesus spit in a man's eye to help him see. While it sounds gross or have someone spit on you, Jesus spit had miraculous powers. What does the name Gol Golta? Where Jesus was crucified mean? Golgotha. Okay, does it mean the place of the cross? Place of sadness? Place of the skull? Place you don't want to go alone at night? <clears throat> it means the place of the skulls. Okay. Which of these I am statements did Jesus really say? It's seven answers. So did he say, I am the way, the truth, and the life? I am the one and only? I am the good shepherd? I am the bread of life? I am the doctor? I am the resurrection of the life? I am the rock? I am your neighbor? I am the light of the world? I am the gate? I am the vine. I am a lamb. So the answers are I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate. I am the vine. Yay! I'm glad we're done with that. So, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Remember, get in tune, tune in, subscribe to the Bible Vibe. Get in tune, tune in, subscribe to the Bible Vibe. Get in tune, tune in, subscribe to the Bible Vibe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You can join me on Facebook, Instagram, and um. Go to the about section. You're going to see everything there, how you can follow me. And I have a PayPal there just in case you want to drop some coins in the bucket. Right? Because I'm trying to look out for my little cousin. His mom's passed away of cancer. But let's not get it confused. This is not for Jesus. Jesus doesn't need your money. He needs your love, support, obedience, and for you to read the Bible. So let's start with prayer. Always pray. Okay, worry about future finances. You, you know who holds the future. Heavenly Father, because I know you care for me, I also know that I cast all my cares upon you. Forgive me for worrying. I cast all my cares upon you now. 
This moment, I know I don't have to bear my burden alone. Thank you for inviting me to come unto you and for your wonderful promise of rest. I receive your rest as I lay my burdens up and worries down. When I look at my life and at my finances, as I know I should in the light of your word, I realize I have no reason for worry whatsoever. Nothing shall be able to separate me from your love, which is in Christ Jesus my Lord. Now, not, not things past nor present, not things in the future. Thank you, Father, for measuring me that you are working your purpose out in my life and that you are the master of all circumstances. I believe your promise which tells me that you will supply all my needs. There is no fear in the future to be found in your great love for me. Because your perfect love casts out all fear. You have told me, Father, not to fear because it is your good pleasure to give me the kingdom. I resolve never to lose sight of the precious promise of your glorious word. Lord, your command is not to worry about anything. Instead, you want to spend my time praying and in supplication. And to let my request be known unto you with thanksgiving. How thankful I am that you have provided prayer and praise and practical outlets to prevent me from ever having to worry. Concerning my finances, Lord, I will place my complete trust in you. I will not worry about tomorrow because I know you will take care of all my tomorrows. With your help, I will take one day at a time, planning well, believing your word, and receiving your promises. Thank you, Father, for the wonderful sense of security you are important to me. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. And also, I want to talk about the word amen. When I was young, I was told amen was a bad word. I was also told that it was like an Egyptian word, something about some mummies and a tomb or something. I don't know. But when, for some reason, I stopped saying Amen. But during my studies of the Bible and things like that, I realized that amen means it shall be done. That's what it means, guys. So we're going to continue to say amen. We're going to start. I really... I really like Joseph. I really like Joseph. The story of Joseph. When I was a kid, it was one of the stories that highlighted everything that made me really love God and see the goodness of God. I got to see his coat, um, how his how his brothers and sisters treated him, and um, I just want to read a little a little bit on Joseph because Joseph is really long. A little bit on Joseph about. Worrying about finances and things like that and how God works things out. He works everything out for the good, right? So, Jacob found out that there was grain in Egypt. So, he said to his sons, Why do you just keep looking at each other? He continued, I've heard there are grain in Egypt. Go down there. Buy some for us. Then we'll live and not die. So, Ten of Joseph's brothers went down to Egypt to buy grain there. But Jacob didn't send Joseph's brother Benjamin with them. He was afraid Benjamin might be harmed. Israel's son were among the people who went to buy grain. There wasn't enough food in the land of Canaan. Joseph was the governor of the land. He was the one who sold grain to all of his people. When Joseph's brother arrived, they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. Just like the dream they had. The dream Joseph had that made them jealous of him, along with the coat. They're going to bow down to him a couple of times. As soon as Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, but he pretended to be a stranger. He spoke to them in a mean way. Where do you come from, he asked. From the land of Canaan, they replied. We've come to buy food. Joseph recognized his brothers, but they didn't recognize him. Then Joseph remembered his dreams about them. So he said to them, you are spies. You have come to see the places where our land isn't guarded very well. 
No, sir, they answered. We've come to buy food. All of us are the sons of one man. We're honest men. We aren't spies. No, he said to them, you have come to see the places where our land isn't guarded very well. But they replied, we were twelve brothers. All of us were the sons of one man. He lives in the land of Canaan. Our youngest brother is now with our father, and one brother is gone. Joseph said to them, I still say you are spies, so I'm going to put you to the test. You can be sure that Pharaoh lives, and you can be just as sure that you won't leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. I promise with an oath that you won't leave here. Send one of you back to get your brother. The rest of you will be kept in prison. I'll put your words to the test. Then we'll find out whether you are telling the truth. You can be sure that Pharaoh lives, and you can be just as sure that if you aren't telling the truth, we'll know that you are spies. So Joseph kept all of them under guard for three days. On that third day, Joseph spoke to them again. He said, do what I say, then you will live, because I have respect for God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers stay here in prison. The rest of you may go and take grain back to your hungry families. But you must bring your youngest brother to me. That will prove that your words are true. Then you won't die. So they did what he said. They said to one another, God is certainly punishing us because of our brother. We saw how troubled he was when, we, when he begged us to let him live. But we wouldn't listen. That's why all of this trouble has come to us. Reuben replied, Didn't I tell you not to sin against the boy? But you wouldn't listen. Now we're being held accountable for killing him. They didn't realize that Joseph could understand what they were saying. He was using someone else to explain their words to him in the Egyptian language. Joseph turned around from them and began to sob. Then he turned around and spoke to them again. He had Simon taken and tied up right there in front of them. Joseph gave orders to have their bags filled with grain. He had each man's money put back into his sack. He also made sure they were given food for their journey. Then the brothers loaded their grain on their donkeys and left. When night came, they stopped. One of them opened his sack to give food feed for his donkey. He saw his money in the top of his sack. My money has been given back. He said to his brothers, here it is in my sack. They had a sinking feeling in their hearts. They began to tremble. They turned to each other and said, what has God done to us? They came to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan. They told him everything that had happened to them. They said, the man who is the governor of the land spoke to us in a mean way. He treated us as if, if we were spies, spying on the land. But we said to him, we're honest men, we aren't spies. We have 12 brothers. All of us were the sons of one father. But now one brother is going and our youngest brother is with our father and canon. Then the man who is the governor of the land spoke to us. He said, here's how we'll know whether you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me. Take food for your hungry families and go. But bring your youngest brother to me. Then I'll know that you are honest men and not spies. I'll give your brother back to you and you will be free to trade in the land. They began emptying their sacks. Their, each man's sack was his money bag. When they and their father saw the money bags, they were afraid. Their father Jacob said to them, You have taken my children away from me. Joseph is gone. Simon is gone. Now you want to take Benjamin? Everything is going against me. Then Reuben spoke to his father. He said, You can put both of my sons to death. If I don't bring Benjamin back to you, place him in my care. I'll bring him back. But Jacob said, my son will not go down there with you. His brothers is dead. 
He's the only one left here with me. Suppose he's harmed on the journey you are taking. Then I will die a, a sad a old man. I will go down into the grave full of sorrow. There still wasn't enough food anywhere in the land. After a while, Jacob's family had eaten all of the grain the brothers had brought from Egypt. So their father said to them, Go back. Wait, I just realized. If they said, After a while, Jacob's family had eaten all the grain the brothers had brought from Egypt. So their father said to them, Go back. That means they left Simon in jail for a minute. They wasn't going back for Simon to sacrifice Benjamin. I just noticed that. Buy us a little more food. But Judas said to him, the man gave us strong warnings. He said, you won't see my face again unless your brother comes with you. So send our brother along with us. Then we'll go down and buy food for you. If you won't send him, we won't go down. The man said to us, you won't see my face again unless your brother comes with you. Israel asked, why did you bring this trouble on me? Why did you tell the man you had another brother? They replied, the man questioned us closely about ourselves and our family. If your father's still living, he asked us, do you have another brother? We just answered his questions. How could we possibly know he would say, bring your brother down here? Judah spoke to Israel, his father. Jacob is Israel. Israel is Jacob. Send the boy along with me, he said. We'll go at once. Then we and you and our children will live and not die. I myself promise to keep him safe. You can hold me accountable for him. I'll bring him back to you. I'll set him right here in front of you. If I don't, you can put the blame on me for the rest of my life. As it is, we've already waited too long. We could have gone to Egypt and back twice by now. Then their father Israel spoke to them. He said, If that's the way it has to be, then do what I tell you. Put some of the best things from our land in your bags. Take them down to the man as a gift. Take some lotion and a little honey. Take some spices and marin. Take some pistachio nuts and almonds. Take twice the amount of money with you. You have to give back the money that was put in your sacks. Maybe it was a mistake. Also, take your brother. Go back to the man at once. May the mighty God cause you. Cause him to show your mercy. May the man let your other brother and Benjamin come back with you. And if I lose my sons, I lose them. So the men took the gifts. They took twice the amount of money. They also took Benjamin. They hurried down to Egypt and went to Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he spoke to the manager of his house. Take these men to my house, he said. Kill an animal and prepare dinner. I want them to eat with me at noon. The manager did what Joseph told him to do. He took the men to Joseph's house. They were afraid when they were taken to Joseph's house. They thought we were brought here because of the money that we put back in our sacks the first time. He wants to attack us and overpower us. Then he can hold us as slaves and take our donkeys. So they went up to Joseph's manager. They spoke to him at the entrance to the house. Please, sir, they said. We came down here the first time to buy food. We opened our sacks at the place where we stopped for the night. Each of us found our sacks, the money we had paid. So we brought it back with us. We've also brought more money with us to buy food. We don't know who put our money in our sacks. It's all right, the manager said. Don't be afraid. Your, your God, the God of your father, has given you riches in your sacks. I received your money. Then he brought Simon out to them. The manager took the men into Joseph's house. He gave them water to wash their feet. He provided feed for their donkeys. They prepared their gifts for Joseph. He was planning to arrive at noon. They had heard that they were going to eat there. When Joseph came home, they gave him the gifts they had brought into the house. They bowed down to the ground in front of him. They bowed again. He asked them how they were. 
Then he said, how was your old father you told me about? Is he still living? They replied, your servant, our father, is still alive and well. And they bowed low to show him honor again. Joseph looked around. Then he saw his brother Benjamin, his own mother's son. He asked, is this your youngest brother? Is he the one you told me about? He continued, my God, be gracious to you, my son. It moved him deeply to see his brother. So Joseph hurried out and looked for a place to cry. He went into his own room and cried there. Then he washed his face and came out. He calmed down and said, serve the food. They served Joseph by himself. They served the brothers by themselves. They also served the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves. Because of their belief that Egyptians couldn't eat with Hebrews. Let's keep going. The brothers had been given places in front of Joseph. They had been seated in the order of their ages. From the oldest to the youngest that made them look at each other in great surprise. While they were eating, some food were brought to them from Joseph's table. Benjamin was given five times as much as anyone else. So all of Joseph's brothers ate and drank a lot with him. Okay. So that was some of the story with Joseph and how they worried about food and grain and money. But God provided for them. And it brought all together for the goodness of the Lord and their family. So we're going to start at Ecclesiastics, Ecclesiastes, verse 10, 19. People laugh at a dinner party, and wine makes life happy. People think money can buy everything. This is Matthew's. 11 verses 25 to 28. All that time Jesus said, I praise you, Father, you are Lord of heaven and earth. You have hidden things from the wise and educated, but you have shown them to little children. Yes, Father, this is what you wanted. My Father has given all things to me. The Father is the only one who knows the son and the only ones who know the father are the son and those to whom the son chooses to make him known come to me all of you who are tired and are carrying heavy loads i will give you rest become my servant and learn from me i'm gentle and free of pride you will find rest for your souls Serving me is easy and my load is light. Amen. This is Luke 12 verses 32. The 34. Little flock, do not be afraid. Your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell what you own. Get to those who are poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. Put away riches in heaven that will not be used up. There no thief can come near it. There no moth can destroy it. Your heart will be, f be where your riches are. Okay. Do not worry. I tell you, do not worry. Don't worry about your life and what you will eat or drink. And don't worry about your body and what you will wear. Isn't there more to life than eating? Aren't there more important things for the body than clothes? Look at the birds in the, of the air. They don't plant or gather crops. They don't put away crops in storerooms. But your Father who is in heaven feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Can you add even one hour to your life by worrying? And 
Why do you worry about clothes? See how the wild flowers grow? They don't work or make clothing. But there is what I tell you. Not even Solomon in all of his glory was dressed like one of those flowers. If that is how God dresses the wild grass, won't he dress you even better? After all, the grass is here only today. Tomorrow it is thrown into the fire. Your faith is too small. So don't worry. Don't say, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? People are ungodly run after all of those things. Your father who is in heaven knows that you need them. But put God's kingdom first. Do what he wants you to do. Then all of those things will also be given to you. So don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is Luke 12 verses 32 to 34. And I already read that. This is Romans 8, verses 28 through 38. We will win. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. He appointed them to be saved in keeping with his purpose. God planned that those he had chosen will become like his son. In that way, Christ will be the first and most honored among many brothers and his sisters. And those God has planned for, he has also appointed to be saved. Those he has appointed, he has made right with himself. To those he has made right with himself, he has given the glory. What should we say then? Since God is our on our side, we can be against, who can be against us? What should we say then? Since God is on our side, who can be against us? God did not spare his own son. He gave him up for us. Then won't he also freely give us everything else? Who can bring any charges against God's chosen ones? God makes us right with himself. Who can sentence us to death? Christ Jesus is at the right hand of God and is also praying for us. He died. More than that, he has raised to life. Who can separate us from Christ's love? Can trouble or hard times or harm or hunger? Can nakedness or danger or war? It is written. Because of you, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be killed. No! And all these things we will do even more than win. We owe it all to Christ who has loved us. I'm absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Not even angels or demons, the present or the future or any power can do that. Not even the highest places or the lowest or anything else in all creation can do that. Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love because of what Christ Jesus our Lord has done. This is verse chapter, this is Philippines, verses 4, 1 through 20. My brothers and sisters, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord's strength. I love you and long for you. Dear friends, you are my joy and my crown. Here is what I'm asking Iota and Saitich to do. I want them to agree with each other because they belong to the Lord. My true companions, here is what I ask you to do. Help those women. They have served at my side. They have helped me spread the good news. So have Clement and the rest of those who have worked together with me. Their names are all written in the book of life. Always be joyful because you belong to the Lord. I will say it again. Be joyful. Let everyone know how gentle you are. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, tell God about everything. 
Ask and pray. Give thanks to Him. Then God's peace will watch over your hearts and your minds because you belong to Christ Jesus. God's peace can never be completely understood. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. Do what you have learned or received or heard from me. Follow my example. The God who gives peace will be with you. What I want to say about that is... God sends his people to help his people. If I can help one person, I will. If I can bring one person to God, I am. If I only have one follower, I'm going to keep doing this. And I made sure to set things up that if hard times ever hit me, again, I'm going to keep doing this. Okay? So this is 1 Peter verses, chapter 5 verses 1 through 11. I'm speaking to the elders among you. I was a witness of Christ's suffering, and I will also share in the glory that is going to come. I'm making my appeal to you as one who is an elder together with you. But shepherds of God's flock, the believer who are under you, care. Serve as their leaders. Don't serve them because you have to. Instead, do it because you want to. That's what God wants you to do. Don't do it because you want to get more money and more money. Do it because you really want to serve. Don't act as if you are a ruler over those who are under your care. Instead, be examples to the flock. The chief shepherd will come again. Then you will receive the crown of glory. It is the crown that will never fade away. Young men, follow the lead of those who are older. All of you put on a spirit that is free of pride towards each other as if it were your clothes, scriptures say. God opposes those who are proud, but he gives grace to those who are not. So don't be proud. Put yourselves under God's mighty hand. Then he will honor you at the right time. Turn all your worries over to him. He cares about you. Control yourselves. Be on your guard. Your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion. He prowls around looking for someone to chew up and swallow. Stand up to him. Stand firm in what you believe. All over the world you know that your brothers and sisters are going through the same kind of suffering. God always gives you all the grace you need. So you will only have to suffer for a little while. Then God himself will build you up again. He will make you strong and steady. And he has chosen you to share in his eternal glory because you belong to Christ. Give him the power forever and ever. Amen. So it shall be done. This is 1 John. We're going to do chapter 4, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18 through 21. I'm speaking a new language. I'm learning new words. Yes! Okay. There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives fear away. Fear has to do with being punished. The one who fears does not have perfect love. We love because he loved us first. Those who say they love God but in fact hate a brother or sister are liars. They don't love a brother or sister whom they have seen they can't love God whom they have not seen here is the command God has given us those who love God must also love their brothers and sisters yes you have to love your brothers and sisters I love my brothers and sisters love your brothers and sisters don't mean that you let people walk over you and take advantage of you because in order to love other people, you have to love yourself first. So if you letting everybody mess all over you, then um, you ain't going to be in no good shape to take care of nobody else or love nobody else. 
So sometimes you have to love people from a distance and let all that anger and stuff go, you know.